This is Twit. He's my rocket man. Spaceman Rod Pyle is here, author of Space 2.0, editor-in-chief of Ad Astra magazine. Get a copy at space.nss.org. First on the Moon. Is that the name of it, Ron? That is. First on the Moon, my favorite coffee table book, uh, all about <laughs> Apollo 11. Well, it's got great pictures, great text. I love it. Yeah. Ron, well, it's good that, to talk to you. That's an honor. Thank you. It's been a good it's space good to week. talk to you. And it has a, just a quick note about your last call. Yes. I don't want to be on the other end of a, of a phone call from an angry casting director because <laughs> I worked a lot of casting directors when I was working on TV, and they are not people that you want to that you want to put I something have a over feeling on. So those they, guys better look out. I have a feeling Linda is going to take it to them, and she should. I think so. She <laughs> should. Yeah, that's a horrible story. And I think you're right. Costco has got to kind of just They're pretty good the about this. Yeah. The fact that HP is blaming her for something that didn't happen oh. is unconscionable. Yeah. Unconscionable. Nasty business. So let's talk Inspiration4 briefly. I've got two stories this week, Inspiration4 and Planet X. But Inspiration4 came back Saturday night, a little after Wasn't 7 Eastern awesome? Time. You probably saw it. I was not inspired was by watching... Jeff Bezos or or Richard Branson no. going up and down, yeah. but I was totally excited about Inspiration 4. They raised two hundred million dollars for St. Jude's Children's Hospital. They 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 well, they were civilians in space, and they did it, and it was perfection, <laughs> perfection. And, and let's just let's just make sure we acknowledge Elon Musk for donating that last fifty million. Fifty million. He filled the gap because he basically yeah. gave Jared but, Isaacman back his fifty million and gave it to St. Jude. Yeah, fact. exactly. Yeah. or whatever he paid Good for I don't, Elon. I don't know we don't know more than fifty, but yeah, yeah. I mean, this is great, great PR. And Bezos, to his credit. You know, he's been doing some really good PR work. He gave the NSS money and a number of other groups, and he did congratulate Elon on the flight. But it's it's still dicey between those two. But I have to tell you, I was sitting in my car because I was out when the landing was happening, and I was watching on my phone, space.com, watch it come back. And so the moment for me, great mission, loved everything about it, but the moment for me was when those parachutes opened because that's kind of the last place where you can have a real problem, right? I wasn't going to say and anything. They had I watched the Netflix documentary which is yeah. really good it's still going on called countdown yeah i was chewing my nails because those four people were beautiful people i feel yeah. like they were kind of going i mean i'm sure their eyes were open but especially the the 29 year old that are we going to the moon yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. scary i think they were taking a bigger chance maybe than they really acknowledged they put their well, life in elon's hands if you've been watching the, that program, the development of the, of the Crew Dragon for all these many years, they had a lot of trouble with those parachutes. They had a, a fair amount of trouble with the abort engine. It was really the parachutes. I mean, we're talking almost 30 major tests, helicopter drops, flights, you name it. Uh, went, I think they went from three parachutes to four early on. But even with that Mark III design, which is what they're using now, they had a lot of problems. I was and you know, my nails. we've been doing. We've been doing parachutes from space since 1960 with with humans, 61. Yeah. Uh, you know, Gemini and Mercury used single parachute. Apollo used three. We did have one flight, Apollo 15, where one opened and then collapsed because it got hit by a, a fuel dump. But, um, you know, as I've said before on, on the air with you, parachutes, if you talk to engineers, they're just like wild animals. You know, <laughs> you try to model them Hi. with software all you can. Hi. But they just don't behave in real in the real world. So I'm so glad they got it right. And this really feels like we've got, and I don't want to jinx anything by being premature, but this feels like we're real finally on the leading edge of reliable access to space for everybody, ultimately, with a machine that just works. They're going to probably use this same capsule again for the Axiom uh, flight that's going up early next year which has got an astronaut, Michael Allegra Lopez, flying it with uh, three passengers. But this will be the third or fourth use of this thing. So this is just remarkable stuff. I just want to volunteer. If, if, they, ever, <laughs> if they ever need a fifth guy... I don't know. I can. I can hold. Oh, okay. I, can, I can. I can hold the iPads for him or whatever. I'm. I'm just. So wanna... you want to be an actor and an astronaut now? <laughs> yeah. <is that> it? <laughs> Basically, I'm living my five year old dreams. I'm a kid. Live the dream. I'm yes. living my dream. Yes. I always wanted to be an astronaut. I would do it in a heartbeat. Even. Yeah. Knowing the risk because it's risky, but they did it. 
Good job. Well, and the thing now is with, with you and me, you know, we're kind of in act three or act four or act seven or whatever it is of life. And as much as I'm a little more conservative than I was, when I was younger, I have fewer years left to lose now. So it kind of makes more sense. I've done everything I want to do it now. Right. Yeah. In fact, you know, th- yeah. there've been some talk about a one way trip to Mars. I would volunteer for that. I don't need to come back. I'll s- I can. Uh, yeah. But have you looked at Mars lately? I, I know. Mean, it's, it's not. It's I know. A little, little grim. So, hey, um, what's Planet X? What are you How talking about? We have left? Oh, we got two and three Planet minutes. Planet X. Yeah. So what's that? OK, new study come back. You know, I, I always look for new studies on, on, on the archives and so forth. And uh, the study came back where they had looked at a bunch of and identified a bunch of new trans Neptunian objects. So these are chunks of rock and the outer solar system beyond the orbit of Neptune. And since Pluto is no longer technically a planet, it's considered one of these things. So this is out in the Kuiper belt. And they looked specifically at the 400 something of them and said, you know, a bunch of these have really weird orbits. And and we're talking about they're charting stuff that's between three and four billion miles with a B out there. So this is not not a trivial thing. And they're looking at these orbits and saying, if they're just being affected by the sun and Neptune, we expect this kind of orbit. And if they're being affected just by the sun because they're far enough away from Neptune that they're not affected, because Neptune's pretty large, but they're not affected by its gravitation, they should be in a rough ellipse. But they've got these wacko orbits, and they're trying to plot these things collectively to say, okay, clearly there's some mass out there it's affecting how these orbit. Now it could be, but they don't see just it. The cumulative, they just see the well, effects it, of it. The effects of it. So it's this kind of, you know, inductive kind of logic, intuitive logic you have to use, which is big in in astrophysics. It could be the collective effects of just a lot of other loose junk out there, kind of acting like a clump. But it could also be this big dark planet that they've been kind of hypothesizing for decades. So if that happens, we'll finally have a ninth planet again. Wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> They're calling it Planet For Nine. Time. They got to come. Can, they can't yeah. call it Pluto because that's. Taken. Yeah, but I like Planet X better because that X is Bugs good. Bunny cartoons use that. Yeah, yeah. It, and it sounds kind of mysterious and nefarious. Or there's what a, was the name of Nibiru, I think. Was was one of the names they came up with for there's the, a precedent the for this planet out there in uh, in science. Uh, if you yeah. can't explain how something's happening, you think maybe there's some, for instance, dark matter. We can't see it, but there's, but it, but we can't oh explain God, yeah. what's, you know, the, the, the phenomena we see without something like that. In the early days, uh, people thought there was ether, that that light went through the air right. and there was something, e- they eventually, Michelson and Morley proved it wasn't, but that was, that was, uh, you know, that was the variable. That was X that they filled in to make sense of all the measurements. Right. And uh, so it's, there's a longstanding uh, tradition. This. Sometimes it works out. Sometimes it's just a bunch of stuff with rough lips. But uh, that's what you said, right? <laughs> it had rough lips. Uh, rough lips. Yeah. I'm just being but silly. I, I know, but but I but you're right. And I mean, so much of and again, you know, being involved with this JPL book again this year. I read these stories, and we'll talk more about them once they release them because they still have to go through uh, a legal review and all that for uh, release they are there's so much stuff in there where you you follow the steps they take backwards from the data to get to something that makes sense yeah and it just makes my hair curl i love science because they're really really smart yeah yeah smart people doing smart stuff yeah. like this guy rod Pyle. he and i are going to Aww. mars the author of space 2.0 <laughs> editor-in-chief at astra space.nss.org thank you rod it's a pleasure Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy.